So in my previous video, I have discussed about uh, what is Spring Data JPA and how does it differ from Hibernate. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to do the project setup and I'm going to show you what are all the basic configurations required uh, to quick start your uh, JPA project. So the first thing we have to do is that uh, we have to pull out all the required starters. Uh, so uh, I'm going to Spring Initializer website uh, start.spring.io now uh, the main thing is that you have to uh, click on this grid button and we have to select all the required uh, dependencies uh, the first thing uh, we have to select is spring web uh, because i'll be developing a restful application to demonstrate all the features so uh, you might need that you have to select a uh, spring data jps so this is the uh, second uh, starter we need and if you read the description, uh, you can see that uh, this starter comes along with Hibernate as well. So that's a good thing. And uh, remember, we don't need our JDBC API or uh, Data JDBC. So we are not going to work on that. Our main focus is on Spring Data JPA. So just select this module. And the third dependency is that it's uh, your uh, database driver. So if you are uh, working with Oracle database, you might have to choose Oracle driver or a PostgreSQL according to your database. Now uh, for the demo purpose and for the uh, development uh, purpose, uh, I would recommend you to go with the in-memory database because it's uh, very simple and lightweight and it comes with your embedded database server so you don't have to set up a separate database server in your machine. So I'm going with history database. Uh, for this tutorial, it really doesn't matter uh, which database you use because um, JPU provides abstractions. Uh, you can play around with any database. So after selecting uh, three starters, uh, which is H2 database, Spring Data JPA, and Spring Web, uh, you can just click on Generate. It will download the project for you. Or else, if you already have a project and you're trying to integrate uh, Spring Data JPA into it, uh, you can just uh, click on Explore. And you can see pom.xml. It might have added few uh, few more dependencies when compared to our existing project. So just pick those dependencies, like for example, data JPA, uh, H2 runtime. So you can just uh, pick all required dependencies and add it to your existing project. And now, if you're starting new, you can just click on generate, and it will download the entire project and you can straight away open that in eclipse now uh, after importing your uh, project to eclipse you should be able to see uh, three files basically uh, the first one is the bootstrap class uh, spring spring boot specific bootstrap class and the second one is uh, application dot properties and currently it's empty we're going to configure uh, data source url information here and the third one is uh, palm.xml and uh, if you are facing an uh, issue uh, just like uh, how i'm facing here uh, you can change uh, the version uh, spring version from 2.2 to uh, 2.1 1.4 so that fixed my problem and if you are not if you are using any other version uh, above 2.2 and if you are facing if you are not facing any problem that's uh, well and good uh, so that's all about uh, palm.xml and if you want to explore you can see that uh, uh, it has all the dependencies which we have pulled uh, like for example h2 database uh, data jp etc now uh, i'm going to close this palm.xml we don't we don't have to touch anything i'm going to move to uh, the bootstrap class so we all know that spring boot is responsible for doing some uh, configuration and component scan uh, but the problem is that uh, the default uh, component scan uh, works only in the current package or the or in the uh, child packages so in case if your uh, components or entities are outside of your uh, package uh, somewhere in another uh, another hierarchy at uh, the default component scan it's not going to work so i'm going to add a few other annotations so uh, the first one I'm going to add is a component scan. Uh, so I'm going to queue my package as com.yrr help. And uh, so uh, now I can uh, place components uh, in, in the yrr help package or in the child packages. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to import that. So, uh, the next thing I'm going to add uh, two other uh, uh, scanning related entities. Uh, let me import that one. So uh, the enable JPA repositories is responsible for scanning your uh, JPA repositories. Uh, so if you're not familiar with JPA repositories, we will be talking in our upcoming videos. 
so if you want to automate if you want spring boot to automatically detect that repositories uh, just like how we detects components you have to enable uh, <coughs> this uh, repository scanning and you have to specify your uh, uh, repositories package and the same thing goes for uh, jpa entities as well so those are the three uh, component scans you might need now uh, so that's all about uh, this java class so i'm going to close this one so the next thing is that uh, we have to configure our uh, data source information like for example um, where is our database located what is the username and password etc so those things you can configure here and i'll try to discuss everything you need to know about configuration in my next video